doesn't mean you eat all the time because I don't eat all the time. You go, girl! Once you stay the hell away from me, it's over for good. Got it? He goes good for a while and then, bam, he gets hit. You know, these are some of the things you could talk about. Duck! Oh, yeah, it's the show that keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. The award-winning talk soup, Greg Kinnear, back with you, checking out highlights of the talk shows one more time. That's what we do here, take the quintessential, most exciting, memorable moments of the world of talk and piece them together in usually a half-hour show, but sometimes on the weekends, particularly this show, we just get a little crazy, say, let's do it for an hour. Okay. Just ahead, King of the Dorks finds true love, a skinny dipper, John, a skinny dipper gets arrested in the nude, and a wacky insurance salesman hawks UFO abduction policy. So you have all of this to look forward to over the next half hour. Oops, no, did I say half? Hour, thank you. First up, though, in days of old when nights were bold, a certain talk show host was rescuing damsels in distress and engaging in dangerous sword play. You know him as Jerry Springer, but after viewing this bit of past life regression, you, like myself, might be calling him Sir Gerald. Somebody's being chased. Mm -hmm. And this person being chased, do you know who that is? No, just some woman. Right, and this woman who's being chased now, is it your duty to protect her in some way? I take it on as my duty. All right, so follow the student now. We catch up and there's a fight. Okay, and how has this fight uh, manifested? Are there any weapons being used in this fight? Swords. Okay, and what happens as a result of the sword fight? The woman gets away, but we're hurt. Are you, do you survive? You personally? Yeah. Okay. Are you are you significantly injured as a result of the sword fight? Pretty badly. All right. So what happens now? You say you survive this. Does this limit your functions as a knight now, and your ability to continue policing and doing your responsibilities that you were doing prior to this incident? Yeah, I can't ride a horse much anymore. Jerry Springer with a past life experience there. Jerry was hypnotized by Bruce Goldberg, who is a, actually a hypnotherapist, a certified one at that, who is also a parapsychologist and, and does a, a little, little dental work on the side every now and then. You know, I will never forget when I had a past life experience. Star Search, 1982. I was, I was doing so damn good. I, Year supply of rice aroni won the finals. Ah, it was fantastic. Apparently, on Jerry's show this Monday, you're going to find out how some disabled children deal with peer pressure in the classroom and on the playground. It's handicapped kids who are doing okay. They'll be talking about life in school. That will be Monday on Jerry Springer. David Copperfield, he's never going to try this one. Never going to do this. We caught wind of this story in a recent edition of The Shirley Show. Art Nevsky is the name of this aspiring illusionist. Here he is now describing levitation tricks that went wrong, so, so terribly wrong. So I'm invited to a party by my best friend, uh, Paul, who uh, there were a few girls there, and he says, why don't you do that levitation trick? And there's a real cute girl there that I really wanted to impress. So uh, I said, sure. So I put myself in this so-called trance, and I said, lift me up and put me on the chair. And Paul would get up on the chair and would stand on my stomach. Now, I, I don't know how to, to <laughs> say this on TV. <laughs> That's the best part, because it's I'll so just, embarrassing. I'll just, I'll put it this way. Just as he was standing on my, well, I don't know what I had for dinner. But uh, <laughs> as he, get a shot of my stomach. I, I have to show you. As, as his foot comes down on my stomach, okay, here it goes. All you hear is this. <laughs> 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 
it is that kind of television stupidity that makes me just want to say one more time in slow motion, please. <laughs> Thank you, Art. We'll check back in with you later. On Monday's show, Shirley will be talking to some psychics who have some amazing predictions for you, me, pretty much everyone. That's all for the year of 1994. I ask you, my friends, could this, would this be the year that Talk Soup wins a Pulitzer? We'll find out Monday. Linda is just plain crazy about Bob. In fact, let's, let's face it, she's just plain crazy, period. Maybe that's why good old Bob's hiding out in secret locations, unbeknownst to his obsessive ex-lover. Apparently, she is calling him... 70, 80, what did you say, John? 90 times a day? Wow, that is a lot. He's tired of being stalked like a hunted animal, he says. If this keeps up, he's going to stop having sex with her altogether. At least that's what he told Sally Jesse Raphael. What makes you think he does love you? Because I just, I know, I know my baby. I love him and I know him. I'm not your baby anymore. He's saying it's over. Where are you, Bob? I don't believe that's any of your business. I know where you are. Cool. Find me. Is the job to no. go... Why do you want to find him, for example? Why is that important? I want to be with him. That's all I wanted to be in the first place. <laughs> do you want to be with her? No. But, Linda, how can to... you want to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with you? He does... Why do you let me come over at night? I don't anymore, remember? Three you, weeks ago. You've almost cost me my job. Wait a minute, I have? You don't cost me everything. You I know have? what? I haven't done that. I want you to stay the hell away from me. It's over for good. Got it? No. Didn't think you would. She does seem to have a problem getting the message from Bob here. He swears he's not leading her on, though, at least as far as he can remember. What happened after she came in? I really don't remember. <laughs> Why do you lie? Lied out. We did made you... love. Oh, did we? Yeah. Ooh. On this Monday show, Sally meets moms who dress like girls half their age and the daughters who wish they'd just grow up. Mom dresses like a teen Monday. More to come here on Talk Soup in a moment. A low-life mom sells her one-month-old baby in the black market. We'll tell you that story. And a man shaves his hands in the name of a bizarre cross-dressing experiment. Reach in here. It's right next to me. You can't see it on this show. I just reach in, and this is kind of what's in there. Okay? I got pens. I got Duracell batteries. Looks like Dagny Holtgreen's earrings left over. Chocolates. A mess. What is this? Hair rollers. Open your stocking jerky. It's crazy. You know what it means? It means talk soup quote of the week's up. Hey! Can we try this thing clean up? It's a mess here. Uh, it comes from the Mo Show. It features an insurance salesman's rather unique claim requirements. Well, the most important thing is we require the signature of an authorized onboard alien. Wow. Everybody knows how expensive it is to be a parent these days. Well, Lena came up with a plan for defraying some of those costs, namely selling her one-month-old baby. Selling her one-month-old baby, but she made the mistake of telling her mom about the plan. Mom tipped off the cops, and as this highlight from the Maury Povich show reveals now, an incriminating phone call finally fortunately, led to our arrest. Is Cody good and healthy? Yeah. He weighs 8 pounds and 14 ounces. Okay, And nice. he weighs 6, 6, uh, 7 when he was born. After the introductions, they got to the terms of the deal. How much money do you want for him? 2000 2000 Now, if we give you 2000 you ain't gonna come back wanting, wanting your money back or that much? Because I'm either going to buy me a trailer or I'm just going to head out of state. Then, a little bargaining. You know that we, I didn't know nothing about this until today. Yeah. And I'm not trying to work no deal here, but I got $1,400. Will that be enough? 
I'll just take that. You'll take 1,400? Well, 900, 1,000. 1,100, Lena didn't realize she had just sold her baby to two undercover officers and was about to get arrested. You know who that guy is? No, I don't. That is Trooper D. Board with the West Virginia State Police. Uh, 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 There. Three years ago, Lena attempted a similar stunt. She tried to sell her three-month-old daughter, Brittany. All five of her kids are now in a foster home, and she will be spending 1994 in prison. On this Tuesday show, meet an overweight man who says he only dates skinny women and an overweight woman who says she loves being large. It's a weighty controversy. Tuesday. Oh, boy. It's time for a... Another guy in a dress. Right? <laughs> Typical. Sure has a talk soup staple. In this case, the man is the executive producer of the Bertice Berry Show. A brave man, indeed. His name is uh, Saul Feldman, and he is acting out the scenario behind the hit comedy Mrs. Doubtfire, where Robin Williams dons a dress and takes on the uh, persona of a nanny. Now, for your viewing pleasure, the transformation of a real-life cross-dressing nanny hit it Saul. Now we'll shave those hairy hands and add a few fishy touches and voila, Saul will be sound. <laughs> was great. I mean, it, loads of comments. You want to comment on any of the things you heard as a woman? Well, it wasn't so much the comments. As I went in, I had to go and, and pretend I was a woman, and I had to go to the bathroom. This was the most interesting thing. So I had all these tights. I had a girdle. I had all this stuff on, and then I, was, I had it all down, and then I thought, oh my God, what if somebody hears the tinkle? <laughs> They'll think that maybe, you know, because a woman, I figured, you know, because they sit, <laughs> You won't hear him. You don't hear him pee. So, so, I, I, it's the first. No, it's the first time. First of all, it was the first time I'd ever sat to pee. That's number one. And number two, somebody had left the seat up. <laughs> John, you said the same thing happened to you when you dressed up like a woman. That. What are the odds of that? What? Are, what a coincidence. On the Bertice Berry Show, get to know women who love bad boys. In other words, guys who won't commit, sleep around, and generally, well, they're just bad boys. Take yourself a quick two-and-a-half-minute cat nap. When we come back, it's time to put unwanted clutter in the out box for once and for all and forever. And his name is Hoop, and he's in the market for love. How would you seduce Hoop? What kind of food would you use? Well, I'm a carnivorous type myself, and he looks like he is. I would treat him like a piece of meat. From Los Angeles, where even the yogurt is cultured, it's talk soup. We continue now. Most men try to act, I guess they try and act a little suave, a boy, a little cool when they're asking a woman out. Big mistake. Face it, guys, that's exactly what they expect you to do. I think we can all learn a thing or two from watching Hoop in action. You're about to meet Hoop, Stephen Hoop Hooper. This guy does not try and pretend he's a stud. As Richard Bay learned, he calls himself king of the nerds and still apparently women lining up for miles around the block to date this guy. Here's why. Bachelorette number one, Hoop, uh, Hoop's taste for food is quite regal. Tell me, how would you seduce Hoop? What kind of food would you use? Well, I'm a carnivorous type myself, and he looks like he is. I would treat him like a piece of meat, and I would smoke... <laughs> and, 
And I would smother him with uh, Heinz 57 or maybe A1, but Heinz 57 sounds good. I don't mean to advertise, but... Uh, well, that's... that's, that's... <laughs> But and then, uh, no, no, that's, very, that, that, that's a very good choice because Hoop hasn't dated very much and he does have to catch up. I okay, see. yes. Uh, there it is. Hoop, Hoop, there it is. Hoop, there it is. Hoop, there it is. Hey, this is fun. Hoop, there it is. Thank you very much, Bob. Normally, the Hoop Man is a gentleman of few, few words, but apparently later in the show, he did have these faults. Nerds, uh, that's a phrase that uh, many people could be classified under. I feel a nerd isn't all that bad, and I feel my royal uh, proclamation is uh, nerds are okay. It's amazing how much authority one can command while wearing a Jiffy Pop aluminum foil crown. You wouldn't think he would have that kind of respect, but I admire him. On Richard's show this Tuesday, who really has more fun? Who does? Is it blondes or brunettes or redheads? Well, redheads aren't going to be involved in the discussion, apparently. It's just blondes versus brunettes. That'll be Tuesday. Christmas is always a lot of fun. New Year's, great time. But the holiday season isn't really complete until you've celebrated National Clean Off Your Desk Day, is it? So back that dump truck into the cubicle and get to work, folks. Meanwhile, we join the Today Show and some other NBC celebs as they start shoveling through those discarded memos and post-its. Please, take a look. Somehow... Ah! My method for organizing my desk? Oh, I, I kind of exist in a plane about six inches above it. I think you've caught me at a time when I shouldn't feel too embarrassed, should I? Actually, it's pretty neat, isn't it? Let's look in the drawers. I haven't done that for about a year and a half. Hello. Meats and poultries over here. Uh, dairy products pretty much in this area here. Um, your breads, your grains, I like to keep in the drawers. It's a homey look, wouldn't you say? As you can see, uh, I don't keep much up here. Uh, uh, men's health, obviously, I'm not reading that. But I've got my, you know, my computer, which is where I really live. I really live here now. Probably about 90% of my organization is, is Trish. Um, basically, what happens is she comes in every day and leaves piles of paper there. He's very neat. So when he sees something on a chair, I know it bugs him. So that's why I do it. Yeah, all right, then. National Clean Off Your Desk Day is, I guess, celebrated the second Monday of each and every year. And I got to tell you, it is probably one of my favorite holidays. So with Talk Soup and later, how are you able to take over hosting duties for E-News Daily? It's National Clean Off Your Desk Day. <laughs> Mike, Earth to Mike. Some people might consider selling UFO abduction policies kind of a, I don't know, kooky idea. But hey, you can always, you can always be a guest in the Mo Gaffney show, right? One question: What's the deductible on an alien mind meld? How do you prove you've been abducted? Well, every policy comes with a claim form. It asks information about the aliens. It asks information about the abductee, whether or not uh, they're a frequent flyer, their year-to-date mileage. <laughs> Uh, it asks information about the aliens themselves, the type of what spacecraft. What they look like. Yeah, you know, if they're type A personalities, type B, or some other type. Right. Uh, if you can get a tag number of the UFO, that's helpful. A tag that's, number? That's, that's good. Do you have, like, a little register that... We do, on the claim form that you just fill that right in, and that, that supports your claim. And don't you have to get your, your claim signed by someone? Well, the most important thing is we require the signature of an authorized onboard alien. Okay? <laughs> It can't, it can't be somebody just working in the galley. Okay? It's got to be like the captain of the ship. Like the Captain Kirk of the ship. Right. And if you have that, then we'll pay you. And the policy is What for, does the policy pay? It's a $10 million policy. 
with $20 million double indemnity should there be extenuating circumstances. What would be an extenuating circumstance? Uh, if the aliens refuse to practice safe sex. Now, <laughs> you don't know where these beings have been. God but. knows. You really don't know where they've been. Or, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> During those long intergalactic journeys, passengers usually amuse themselves by watching in-flight movies. We happen to have footage now from My Dinner with Glexnor, which is showing on the eastbound saucer through the Orion belt. For those ignorant few out there, that film had Enosian subtitles. Wednesday, Mo will meet people who were declared dead before their time due to the technical mix-ups, human error, and unfounded rumors all over the place. Wednesday. How is art doing, Fred? Things never change, do they? <laughs> being arrested is a humbling experience, don't I know it? But being arrested in the nude, whew, even more humiliating. Earlier this week, Sally Jesse spoke to a woman who apparently, this is true, she was arrested, apprehended, dragged down to the police station, went through the whole search and everything for being caught skinny dipping. She also heard from a retired police officer who feels this lady got what she deserved. The boyfriend comes out. He's not giving them any problem. She comes out and says, oh, please, officer, don't arrest me. And she's shaking her chest. And then he, now this is supposed to, wait. Ooh. Now she's supposed to, uh, let me out. she's shaking her chest. Let me out. Um. Figure this out. Well, this yeah. cop is going to let me off because, you know, I'm not really doing anything wrong. I'm only skinny dipping. Mm. When she finds out that it didn't work the way she thinks it's going to work, then she starts getting loud and boisterous, telling this cop, no, I'm not doing this, not doing that. That's why the cop has to throw it to the ground and handcuff her. If she's going to run or grab her clothes or this cop doesn't know what she's trying to grab, so if, she has to flee. You know, he's thinking she's going to flee. Wait a second. Go ahead. Were you there? No, I went. I read the article. Okay. Well. <laughs> did you say you came out and of the water with your hands like up? Anything like that. Wait, did you say that? in an article that I came out going like this? I thought I did read something about her coming out going like this. We... Oh, woman comes out going like this. There it is. <laughs> Thank you. Wednesday on Sally's show. Tune in for more fun. Some courageous kids, very courageous kids, come forward to explain how they were molested. It's, it's abused kids speaking out. Wednesday, Sally. Well, help make your significant other seem more significant. Try this helpful hint from The Shirley Show. Author Ellen Creedman says kissing for 10 seconds is perhaps the best, finest, most significant way of putting the flame back into your romance. It also beats flossing between meals. So what I have, and there are exercises throughout, is a 10 second kiss. Whenever you haven't seen each other for a long period of time, you are to wrap your arms around each other and give each other a 10 second 10 kiss. 10 second kiss. So right. for every couple that says, well, we don't have time to be romantic, I lo normally say, do you have 10 seconds? And I would love to use this wonderful audience for everybody who is with somebody to stand up and we are going to count down what 10 seconds is because normally people do not know how long that is. All right, now wait, for those of us who are at home, back home and we don't have our partner use your hand use just your, hand. your hand if you're practice. not with somebody everybody here is with practice but, right just ten to all right, feel ready? 10 seconds okay, stand up everybody here we go here we go good good all right all, the all right we'll do a countdown here we'll do a countdown all okay, right everybody on your mark all right on your mark get set go all right ten, nine eight seven six five four Three, two, one. Yeah, that's great, great. Okay, now I got it. Does that seem like a long time? Ten seconds, huh? What? Well, what? That's a long ten seconds. No, 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 my friend. No, 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 no. 
this is a long 10 seconds. Friedman says that if you forget to perform your 10-second kiss one day, you should kiss for 20 seconds the next day. And if you forget for two days and 30 seconds on the third day, and if in the unlikely event, I'm just throwing this out now, say for four days you forgot, oh, hey, we didn't kiss, you would then do a 40-second kiss, so on and so forth, compounding with each additional day an additional 10 seconds of kissing on Wednesday show. Sure. <laughs> Shirley looks into online romances. The fad of the 90s is the computer bulletin door about to replace the matchmaker. We'll take a quick break and be back in just a moment with a story of an overprotective little brother, but a good guy and a daughter who thinks her mom needs to lighten the load. Once to the time when I eat, I'm under stress. This woman here is bothering me. That's right. The French philosopher Descartes coined the phrase, I think, therefore I am. In his time, that statement was considered the backbone of all rational thought and held fast for quite some time. What the world needs now is an equally profound concept, and I think this highlight, in my opinion, from the Montel Williams show certainly delivers. Up next, Yolanda's overweight mom, Lucille, utters the immortal phrase that could be the backbone of our society for some time to come, I may be fat, but I am here. Yes. Just because she has the problem of the high blood pressure, what have you, that doesn't mean that it's because of her weight. All people, if you have skinny people that have a high blood She's pressure. Right. She's right. She's absolutely right. right. No, 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 no. no. So to roll her around in no, the wheelchair. No, no, no. And no. I cannot roll. No, see, that's part of you being negative again. Wait a minute. My that's child. part of her being and negative again. No, no, that's not right. What is, the, what, is, what is the contributing factor to a person that is skinny? I am a nurse. And just because you're fat, that doesn't mean you eat all the time because I don't eat yeah. all the time. You go, girl. You go, girl. You go, girl. Under stress, mm -hmm. this woman here is bothering me. That's right, <laughs> exactly right. She's pushing her. You might as well load a gun and give it to her because that's what she's she doing. Now, you want to know the cause? No, 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 that's no, 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 Highlight a Montel Williams show there. Health issues aside, Yolanda says she's plain embarrassed to be seen in public with her mom. But moreover, she is genuinely concerned about her health and is subsequently trying to get her to slim down a little bit. On Thursday's show, eight men compete for the title of sexiest husband in America. I now declare you beefcake and wife. Thursday. Amber is 21, but she apparently still has to forewarn potential bows about her her little bro, Rusty. Rusty's a little on the protective side. The dad is not around at the home a lot, and so her little brother often makes sure that everything goes... What? Everything goes well on their dates. He just doesn't want any funny stuff. No hanky-panky, as Rusty puts it. Say hello to Amber and Rusty, please. Why are you so overprotective of your big sister? My dad ain't around as much as I am. He's never around to see her or see any of her boyfriends. I want to take care of her. So what are some of the things you say to her dates? I threaten to hit them if, if they bother her in any way. I don't want them touching her in any, you know, non-necessary way. <laughs> What's a non-necessary way? I was going to ask him that. <laughs> like touching her private parts or... <laughs> but, but don't you think your sister deserves to have a life and to meet men and to maybe find a husband? Don't you want that for her? Yeah, but I want her to pick the right man. I want her to pick Sounds the right man. Sounds to me like right. you want to pick the right man. 
Indeed. That is a highlight of the Ricky Lake show there. And we do have a possible body double. Here now is Rusty with the possible talk suit body double match. Private Pile from Full Metal Jacket, we got a match show. Oh, how about it? On Thursday's show, Ricky meets men and women who think their spouses spend way too much time with their co-workers. Uh, oh, this is a good clip. Interesting role reversal. Mothers are always trying to rein in their teenage daughters, but how often do you hear a teenage girl asking mom to tone things down? Well, I guess she did a couple of clips ago, but the point is Fatima's willing to let her mother, Mariza, cut loose from time to time as long as she can keep her bathing suit top on when she's at the beach. Why don't we check out this Richard Bay highlight now? My mom is forever rocking the cradle. She's going oh, loving the cradle. She's always going out. Rubbing. Oh my God. To get yeah. a date, she has to wait till recess. They are so <laughs> <laughs> Now, Maritza, Maritza, your job, I guess, is to some degree using your sexuality when you're a go-go dancer yes, to, you know, to get guys to give out tips and whatever, you know. Yes. But when you go to the beach and you're with your daughter and you're walking around topless like In a G-string. In a G-string. I wasn't topless. Not topless. I went into the beach in the water with the top on and of course a G-string. Ma, you have to feel the breeze. You no, I didn't. So the way you didn't realize that your top was off. No, it happened so fast. I didn't feel it. You know, she also didn't realize that Truman defeated Dewey, that Falcat broke up, that the Chevy Chase show was canceled, and that the atomic weight of boron is 12 microns. That. that is a guest response. James Taylor there. On this Thursday show, Richard invites married women to confront a group of shameless homewreckers. Carefully, ladies, these women may be easy, but they're not pushovers. You see this next guy walking down the street. You may want to cross to the other side. Unlucky Lorenzo. That's what I call him. He's been a bad luck magnet for some time now. He has apparently been hit by a total of five cars in his lifetime. He's only 20 years old. I guess that's like once every four years he's being hit. Let's take a look at this highlight from Mo. Well, when I was 19 months old, I was coming out of church and I got hit by a car. It took me two, two blocks down the road. I was rolling under the car. And uh, when I was eight, I was coming from church. And, uh... <laughs> And this dog was barking, and it scared all of us, you know. So I, like, ran and put one foot out in the road, and that, as soon as I stuck it out in the road, this nurse hit me. <laughs> and um, then when I was 15, um, I was riding a bike to work. And I was gone, too, because I came from, like, five miles. I was riding to work, you know, first job. And um, I got two blocks away from work, and lady just hit me <laughs> and knocked me off the bike. And um, when I was 16 and I was in a car accident, um, we was driving down the road, and he wasn't watching where he was going, because I was looking at him, and I'm sitting on the, you know, the passenger side in the back. And he was looking off to the side, and it was raining, and it was slick on the road. So he tried to stop. It didn't stop. So he turned to the right. And when he turned to the right, he turned all the way into the other lane where the traffic was flowing. And the car only hit my door. <laughs> and um, when I was 18, I was going to play basketball. And I begged my friend to borrow his bike. You know, it was two blocks. I just didn't want to walk, you know. So um, I got there, got like a block away. I crossed the street, and I was on the sidewalk, and this Mexican just rolled up and hit me. Now, that is bad luck. We're all a little concerned, of course, about Lorenzo, as I'm sure you are as well. So we asked our resident talk soup psychic to sort of predict what the future holds for Lorenzo. And quite frankly, it doesn't look real good. At the age of 26, he's nailed by a unicycle. He's broadsided by a cement truck at 31. At 37, a tuba player apparently injures him. 44, a Buick LeSabre runs him over. This is sad. At 52, an anti-aircraft missile goes misguidedly into the rear side of his house. And at 64, John Esposito! just barrels over him in his golf cart that he drives around town, apparently. 
Friday on Moe's show, sure, you got a cute dog, but for Get Defeated, it'll come after you. These people are very, very, very concerned about their pets. In fact, some say they're pet obsessed. Friday. We'll take a break. Still to come, Robin Williams won't let Billy Crystal get a word in edgewise. And while your ears are still ringing, it's doormat or good sport. You be the judge! Your wife is your best friend. So if you can't go out to clubs and dance with your wife, then you don't need your friend. But let me... Well, this weekend, this very weekend on HBO, Robin Williams, Billy Crystal, and Whoopi Goldberg are appearing in the sixth annual comic relief benefit for the homeless. It is a uh, great event, raises a lot of money. Robin and Billy apparently showed up on GMA the other day to talk to Chantal. Take a look. First of all, they said it's National Rifle Association. I think you should take it one step further. What? You know, we have a lot of nuclear arms that are just sitting around wasting away. <laughs> so what I think you do is you split them up and give them that to each and every individual household so you have the National Association of Nuclear Armaments or NANA. Basically, this is it. Someone breaks into your house, you know, long you trip off that small thermonuclear device, bingo, the intruder is gone. So is the neighborhood. This also takes care of crime. It leaves a well, the only problem, basically, as I see it, is you have that really long escrow period of about 2,000 years until the radiation death there. But I do believe that there are some other possibilities along with this. That's so called that NANA. That's right, National Association of Nuclear Armaments. Eventually, uh, some of the aspects along with this is you get some of that, you might have some great agricultural feedback, as they found out at Chernobyl, those 800-pound boneless chickens, you know. <laughs> <laughs> those are the big things, but this is all part of it. You know, these are some of the things you could talk about. Duck! But, you know, some of the things you did. Uh, the, oh, other things. Bill, hit him up now. Bill, Clinton Health Plan, and we can uh, talk about that, and uh, the administration, and... Um, uh, do you know me? My name is Bill Clinton, but thanks to this, the Clinton medical card, you can get surgery, also free air travel miles. I flew to Mazatlan on my kidney. <laughs> and you didn't see my lips move once? Not once. Right? Look at what you're wearing. Somewhere there is a couch that is cold. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this, this lovely Vatican rosary beads made from Imelda's pearls. I love all of these. Look at that. I kind of thought you'd like this look, I actually. I think so. Madonna said, I don't need this one. <laughs> The highlight of GMA, Robin Williams and Billy Crystal, who just who just runs on, doesn't he? Never given anybody else a chance to speak. Apparently, a Good Morning America this Friday, all my star... Well, see, I messed that up, didn't I? But I can fix it. All my children's star, Susan Lucci, talks about her new TV movie, French Silk, and that elusive Emmy. Keep telling her we're going to give it to you this year, and then, boom! Uh-uh. Doesn't seem right. Seems unfair to me. Pete was caught. Pete was caught cheating for the first time when his wife, Kelly, was pregnant. Since that unfortunate event, he apparently has dogged her 30, 35 times. So you're probably sitting there, your feet up on your ottoman, watching this, saying, hey, when's the divorce final? Well, the fact is Kelly's decided to stand by her man, whether he's faithful or whether he's not. Here's Ricky with the details. He said that maybe he wasn't mature enough or you're going to wait for him to mature. What happens if he doesn't mature until you're 70? That means you live the rest of your life waiting for him to mature and take care of you? Yeah. Your husband, your wife is your best friend. So if you can't go out to clubs and dance with your wife, then you don't need your friend. But let me just bring up this fact. She has three children he to think about. an opportunity to make two. After he cheated on me the first time, there would have been no baby number two. It, it wasn't like that. I mean, we there was the first incident, and then it was quiet for a, a couple of years. I mean, he he goes good for a while, and then bam, he gets hit. And it's when we go to a restaurant, we can't even go to a restaurant without some woman pass, a waitress passing her phone number at the dinner table. I think that's very disrespectful. What women do that? They gently throw themselves at her. Yeah, but it's also, it's disrespectful that that woman gives him the number, but it's he, he's, he's disrespecting you by taking that number and using it. Well, whatever. At the end of the show, the audience took a vote and decided Pete and Kelly should call it quits. Robin can't seem apparently to get along with... Her meddling mother-in-law, whose name is Connie, no matter how hard she tries to be the perfect wife, Connie always looks down on her. Of course, things wouldn't be so dire if Robin and her husband, Chad, didn't live under the same roof as Connie. Bertice Berry has all the inside info. There was something yeah. about the wedding dress, too. What happened there? 
Well, I wanted to wear a different dress, and like, she didn't like it. Like, you wanted to wear a black and white dress? And, yeah, and she didn't what like it. What black and white dress? Yeah, we seen <laughs> We went to, we was going to no, go to Logan no, Sports, honey. to the rent center and I didn't have the money to get it, that Robin. That was a rental place. I tried the black and white dress on. I didn't have the money to rent it. Well, you cleaned the other one for the same price, though. I, it cost more. No, it did not. It cost $40. That's how much it was to rent the dress. Oh. Well, she should have called me. All my friends call me. Whenever it comes to renting wedding gowns or formal attire for guys, I got a great spot I use. You're getting married, but you can't afford the gorgeous flowing Alfred Angelo original that would make your wedding day truly wonderful. Then come to E's Discount Bridal Shop for the best in budget wedding day attire. Can't spend $3,000 for a Halston backless dress? Then experience the splendor of our E's oversized t-shirt original. Just $12.95. And why spend $750 on a lace veil when this high-class, low-budget alternative from E's private collection is the perfect solution? And don't forget, we also have a discount groom section for all your groom needs. So come to E's Discount Bridal Shop for the best and uniquely affordable wedding attire. There's no better way to say, today, I'm special. at the bottom of the weekly talk soup stew. One last clip for you right now. I'd suspect Rocky's owners have been adding some vitamin E supplement to his gravy train. How else do you explain this little guy's voracious sexual appetite? Recently, Maury Povich received a lesson in canine carnal knowledge. Here now! Talk soup clip of the week. His name is Rocky, and Rocky impregnated a Rottweiler, just like that Rottweiler, the one we have from the Malibu Pet Hotel. Now, this may sound pretty average to you, right? This a Rottweiler like this gets impregnated by a dog named Rocky. But then again, we haven't met Rocky. Rocky, would you please come out? I think Rocky wants to have another go at it. <laughs> Rocky's owner was sued for $25,000 by the owner of the impregnated Rottweiler. Later, Maury showed the two dogs in action. Friday, Maury explores the fat myth. That's Exploring the Fat Myth Friday on... The Maury Povich Show. Thanks for joining us on the weekend edition of Talk Soup. I'm Greg Kinnear. We'll be back here to do it all again Monday. See you then. Coming up next on E, it's E! News Week in Review. I've got to put on my news voice, Week in Review. It's coming up next right here on E! Week in Review.